this week's video, we're going full send Japan. I've got myself a 1995 Mazda Bongo. Tonight, we're cooking up a chicken katsu. If me and Ben wake up tomorrow without salmonella, in my opinion, that's a job well done. We're getting the full Japanese experience. We're gonna be camping, eating, sleeping. I think this is me all set up for the evening. Like a French porn star, aren't I? And driving this bad boy. I can assure you that noise is not because of me. Yet again, we are back in the beautiful English countryside. Last night's journey up here was eventful as it always is because my exhaust protection plate fell off mid journey on the motorway and we had to pull over and rip that off and sort it out. This new series is not only about showing you guys different setups and giving you a bit of a tour, but it's also about fully experiencing what different camper vans are actually like. And this week, I've got my hands on a Japanese Mazda Bongo from 1995. So it's actually a year younger than I am. It's time to get ourselves a taste, oh, sugar, of Japan. Immobilizer in. Wait for red light to turn off. That should be it. <laughs> Yes, boy. One thing I'm noticing straight away is this is a great camper van for the countryside narrow roads. Okay, that noise isn't me, by the way. They did warn me about that noise. There's a load of different switches and things on here, which I'll be honest, I've not got a clue what they do, but there's some very cool features that I want to show you later when we get set up for this evening, because there's things in this van that I've never seen on any other van before. The couple that actually owns this van, big thanks to Meg and Jake for letting me take it out for a spin. They actually go out in this pretty much every weekend, they said, and I can see why. It's small, it's compact, it's so easy to drive. You've obviously got a basic setup inside of a bed, a small little kitchen. You can stealth camp in it, you can go underneath height barriers, and you can pretty much go anywhere in this. We're on our way to a local supermarket now, because tonight, of course, with all of these vans, I want to show you the full experience from not only just driving them, but also sleeping in them, cooking in them, and just camping in them. So, because we're in a Japanese van, I have to honor that, and I've got to cook a Japanese meal. Something I've never cooked before, so uh, that should be interesting because it's definitely going to be a little bit tight and a bit of a squeeze cooking that in here. Genuinely, out of all of the vehicles that I've driven over the last few weeks creating this brand new series, this Mazda Bongo has to be the easiest, simplest, and just the most fun to drive. The fact that I'm able to just slot in quite nicely in a single bay car parking spot is wonderful. No panic, no nothing. As always, I've got no idea what ingredients I need, so before we go into the supermarket, Tesco, Let's uh, try and find a half decent recipe that has a minimum or maximum, sorry, of about 10 ingredients. Otherwise, cooking in this setup is going to be absolute chaos. Chicken katsu recipe, BBC good food. With bloody salad, no thanks. Spring, I think, or summer, I really hope is on the way. Creamed coconut block. I don't know what the difference with any of this stuff is, but I think that should do the job. Buttermilk, what the hell even is that? That's fair. Lovely jubbly straight in my basket. Surely there's bloody buttermilk knocking around here somewhere. Just one carrot, I think. So that'll do. <laughs> buttermilk does exist, ladies and gentlemen. That's a first for me. Fresh buttermilk. Tell you what, we may or may not have gone a bit nuts on the ingredients for tonight, so it should be good fun trying to work out how we're gonna cook all of this in this tiny space. Thank you, sir. No worries. Say thank you. Maybe not. 
I can't stand rude people. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any better than this. What a bloody park up. This is right in the forest, peaceful, quiet. All you can hear right now is the noise of the rain and the birds chirping away. This is a perfect spot to be camping out in this tonight. Let's jump inside the bongo because I genuinely absolutely love this camper van. Or should I call it a micro camper? Because it's absolutely tiny in here. It's compact, it's modular, it's basic, but it has absolutely everything that you need. This is a rock and roll bed, which is currently the sofa. It's pretty tight in here. There's not a huge amount of space. When it comes to sleeping, which you'll see later on in the video, you just pull this out and it turns into your bed. On the kitchen side, again, there's two different ways of cooking. Once we pop up the roof tent, you could stand up, but for the moment, I'm just sat down. We've got a hand pump with a small sink. Underneath here, in one of the storage units, you have got, if I can open the cupboard, we've got a gas canister, which obviously supplies the gas for the two hob gas burner. And you've got a 10 litre water tank, which supplies the water for the sink. And in case of emergencies, in case the chicken katsu goes absolutely tits up, we've got a fire extinguisher. In the other storage unit on the opposite side, we've got a few things like pots, pans, plates and all of that. So cooking wise, we've got the two hob gas burner, which of course we're going to be using and showing you tonight. This definitely isn't a van that you'd want to live in, personally, but for weekend trips and things like that, it's amazing. Oh wow, look at that. That's not a cartridge window vacuum, but it's uh, pretty much the equivalent. I bloody love these things. On my van, I decided not to put windows absolutely everywhere because I wanted a bit of privacy. But with this van, there's literally windows all around. A panoramic view, some would say. And uh, I'll show you later, there is a very, very cool feature with these windows, which I've never seen before. And I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. Now you may think that this van looks small, which it is, and it could only sleep two people. But let me tell you, it can't. You could actually sleep four people inside here two where i'm sitting now and then two on top because this entire ceiling lifts up which enables me to stand up and cook and just to allow you to have so much more space in here only thing is i've now got to remember how to do it because i think there's a few different tricks and quirks to make it work right immobilizer back in to turn the engine on red light we're in park so now I need to press a few buttons up there. Lock, cancel, open. Oh, ho, 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 ho. we are going up, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first time using a pop top. Oh, look at the ample amount of space you got now. It's huge in here. Well, I say huge, that's an absolute complete lie, but when you're sitting down without the ceiling up, it now feels so much more spacious. Look at it up here. It's bloody brilliant. And what's even better is, I believe, anyway, I can put this down and somebody could actually sleep up here. Two people, in fact, because there's a mattress that actually comes with these bongos. So two people up here, two people down below. I think this van is bloody amazing. For the size of it and the amount of people you can sleep in here and the setup and how basic it is, it is all you need. I'm assuming this is how you get up. And what you don't know, there's actually a hatch door here which separates this bottom area from the top area. There's one disadvantage to having this van and it's the fact there's no diesel heater and there's no way of actually heating the space in here. So we're going to crack on with tonight's dinner and actually use the gas stove while we cook to hopefully warm up the air in here. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit nippy. Literally pick the most confusing, complicated recipe to cook in a van. Cover and marinate in the fridge for at least two hours. There's probably no point even doing the buttermilk. Oh good, I don't get any bloody signal here. The irony of like the most complicated uh, cooking, uh, cooking yeah. thing. In this, I know. <laughs> right. This is why I just cook fajitas every time because it's so easy. And I'm trying to branch out and cook different recipes for you guys because you want to see that. But it stresses me out because now I can't, I don't know how I'm going to cook this in here. Okay, I'm getting hot now, I'm getting sweaty. Excuse me. <laughs> Not a huge amount of space in here, so it's quite close and personal. I'm thinking I could actually put the buttermilk in here. Yeah. And let it soak. That is pure genius, that. With the garlic and the ginger, chop it all up, wash it in there. 
Yeah, let it marinate for what, about two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just stick this in the fridge for two hours and uh, we'll see you shortly. Can you remember what was in the marinade? No. I think it's come apparent very quickly that yes, this van is great, it's stealthy, it's small, it's compact, but when it comes to cooking things properly, it's a nightmare because there's just there's just limited space, you know, to put everything and you're having to move things from one place to another to get access to another thing. Oh, mate. <laughs> Yummy. If me and Ben wake up tomorrow without salmonella, in my opinion, that's a job well done because yeah, salmonella's definitely on the cards tonight. I might actually cook up there, you know. I'm, I'm not even joking. Yeah. I could go up here. What you, you could pop that up. There we go. Why did you not tell me that before? <coughs> oh, there we go. Apart from now, I'm very crouched down trying to cook. You don't want a muffin now, my I'm, I'm starving right now. This is my starter. Bon appetit, thanks everyone. I'm too hungry right now to wait for them carrots to simmer down. I haven't seen any parking signs tonight saying that you can't stay here, but fingers crossed it should be all right. That muffin was gone about 0.3 seconds. If anybody's got any really simple basic meals that you can cook in vans like this, please, please let me know because any recipes, anything like that that I can try out in the videos that you guys will enjoy and recipes that have actually come from you, that would be amazing. So send me a message on Instagram, leave a comment, or even send me an email. Let's go in with the chicken. No salt, pepper, no seasoning, no nothing. That's not supposed to be in there. So far we've got chicken, carrots and onion. That sounds like a good recipe to me. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon we need to add a bit of spice and flavor and ingredients to that, otherwise it's gonna be the blandest meal we've ever eaten. Medium curry powder, some turmeric and garam masala. This is where I don't know how much of what by the way, so I'm just freestyling this. That should do, that's half the packet. <laughs> Does it smell strong? Yeah. Oh God. I'll put the coconut, Yeah, right. The coconut thick, oh my flipping back. <sighs> Prior to about an hour ago, I would have quite liked one of these vans, but this cooking experience has kind of uh, changed my uh, decision on that. Here we've got some creamed block coconut. My goodness me. Ooh. We're gonna let that simmer for a couple of minutes or 10 minutes or so and see what happens. Mm. Mm. Tastes like a curry to me, that. Mm. Damn, that's actually pretty nice. I feel like I'm back in the Victorian days. <laughs> I like it though. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Kind of a chicken katsu, not a chicken katsu in any way. Just a chicken curry. That's a sexy shot, that is. Look at that, I tell you what. I don't know what it tastes like. It probably needs to be a little bit more saucy. A bit like me, saucy. Anyway, um, oh, that smells delicious. Here you go, bon appetito. Mm. It's not bad. Especially helps if you get a mouthful of coriander, but yeah, just needs a little bit more sauce, and uh, I think it'd be half decent. I've decided for tonight, because there's no heater in here, I'm going to put the tent down, it's not necessary. I'm actually going to sleep on the rock and roll bed, so I figured it should stay a little bit warmer with the less space there is to fill up and heat. So uh, we'll put the tent down if I can. Oh yeah, I need the key in the ignition. Ben's just reminded me of that. <laughs> Literally can't see anything. It is pitch black outside. Right, let's try that again. Close. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on? There we go. Apparently it's got some dodgy Japanese wiring, so sometimes you've got to press things a couple of times. Before we uh, get into bed, I wanted to show you how I'm going to set up for this evening because I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a very unique feature with this van and it's something that I've never seen before. So, let me show you. The fact that the curtains actually come down electrically I think it's absolutely brilliant. So this one on the back left is actually broken, the motor's not working, but you can just pull it down like that. So unfortunately on the rear windscreen, we don't have the luxury 
of these fancy electric motored curtains. However, we do have, if I can find them. Oh God, maybe I've just covered it. No. Oh no. Oh, my arm's stuck. Where is it then? Oh, it's there. I'm gonna have to lift the flipping thing up again. Fuck's sake. Oh. Ah. Uh, we've got to go back up. Uh, lock, cancel. This is what I was trying to get for the back window. Right, put it back down. I think, yeah, it's got to go all the way. <laughs> I think once you get used to this van and use it a lot, You'd understand the process of how to do everything, but when it's your first time, you're bound to make mistakes. This really takes me back to my Ford Galaxy days, when I literally made a rear windscreen cover out of some foil that I had left over. And uh, you know what? It did the job. Oh no. That's the freaking front, front windscreen. It's the front windscreen. I don't need the front windscreen. Is this a joke? Can you still work on the back? There is a back one. <laughs> but I can't be asked to lift the thing back up again. Where is it? That's the side one. That's the side one. That's uh side one. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, the back one is here. There we go. Don't do as I do or as I say. So the bed is a very simple rock and roll bed. It's just got a hole in the piece of wood here. You probably can't see, it's quite dark. You've got a little lever, which you just swing to the right, and then just pull the bed out. Oh, that's meant to happen, I can assure you. And then the pillows and stuff. Oh, you just wedge them in, and there we have it. Let me jump in and show you the size of this place. This is tonight's bed arrangement and uh, where I'm going to be spending this evening, just chilling out and hopefully getting a decent night's sleep. As I said, this should theoretically fit two people, but if you look at me here, I'm right to the far right as I could go. You could squeeze another person in here, it would just be an extremely tight sleep, but uh, it could be done, that's for sure. I think the technique usually for the front windscreen and the side windows is again those suction cup covers, but uh, I'm just feeling lazy and uh, they use a blanket in here to actually just cover up this middle section, which kind of just separates the cab from the, uh, the boudoir area. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same. Just stuff it up here somehow. It's not perfect, but hopefully I don't have any dodgy people looking at me sleeping in the middle of the night. But who knows? I think this is me all set up for the evening. Like a French porn star, aren't I? I'm gonna shut up shop, close the door, and I'll see you lot in the morning. And uh, fingers crossed for a half decent night's sleep in here. Classic British weather yet again. Do you know what? I've got to say, I slept like an absolute baby in here. It was delightful. Really warm, nice and cosy. And then this morning, I've woken up to the noise of the rain tapping on the roof. Ouch. 
Oh. Do you know what? I've got to say, apart from the weather, I have thoroughly enjoyed being back in a micro camper. This is such a good van for so many different reasons. It's small, it's compact, it's stealthy, it's easy to use, and it's simple and just so easy to drive. No doubt for a lot of people, it's not gonna be for you. It's not got a huge amount of space inside, but for people with specific needs, like a weekend getaway, like the mini trips, or a couple one, two nights away, this is brilliant. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this series that I'm able to go and try out different camper vans, different campers, and completely different setups each week. It's great fun just to create videos on different vehicles. If you guys have enjoyed these videos, please make sure to give the video a like. Please make sure to subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you next week with another weird, wonderful, and wacky camping setup. I just wanted to end. I just... This is what it's like filming these videos, setting up a few drive-by shots, just to uh, add a bit of context to the video, a bit of storytelling. Oh, I love it. The fucking doors open. Oh, yet again, it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. Jesus, man, when are we going to get some decent weather here? Mm-hmm. <laughs>